Okay, so we are doing the equations and inequalities unit, starting with the beginning, which leads up to quiz one. Um, I already went over in another video of how to solve equations, but I'll briefly go over it again here for the one-step equations. So what is an equation? It has an equal sign, equa equation. Okay, so it says which of... Which value of k makes 5 minus k plus 12 equal to 16 a true statement? So pretty much you're plugging in for k. It's like evaluating expressions, which was in a previous unit. So if I plugged in a 1 here, and always use PEMDAS, because that's the order you always go in. If I put in a 1 here, I get 5 minus 1, which is 4. 4 plus 12 is 16. Yes, that works. So if I plugged in a 2, a 3, or a 4, that's not going to work. So which of these make n equal to 6 a solution? Is 10 minus 6, 4? Yes. Is 6 divided by 2, 3? Yes. 6 plus 7, 12? No. 8 times 6, 48. 5 plus 6, 8? No. So it's just A, B, and C. So pretty much you're just plugging in and seeing which is a solution. So these are using tape diagrams. Um, I don't know why they teach this method. I don't know, it's just kind of weird for me, but let me just kind of go over this of what they kind of expect you to do. So this would be one, uh, W plus 1.3 equals 2.7. So this equals this. So that added together equals that. This would be 13 plus T equals 17. And so T would be five, I mean four, right? You can plug that in. 13 plus four is seven. This would be Y plus Y equals you know, or you could even put 2y equals 7, but let's do y plus y equals 7. And 16 equals y times 4. y is 4, right? You can plug these in. 4 times what is 16? 4 times 4. So you can always plug in for your equations to see if your answer is correct. This would be h plus 7 is, and they're kind of showing this to you as a scale. Because as an, you know, when you have an equation sign, the equal sign itself means that this side is the same value as this side. So it basically is a scale, right? It must always be balanced at all times. And you'll learn that when you start solving multi-step equations. So here we have four R's and this equals 32. So each of these have to equal eight, right? Eight times four, you know, this would be 32 equals four R. Eight times four is 32, so R is eight. And so the rest is just going over one-step equations, which I went over inverse operations in another video, but let's kind of just briefly, briefly go over that again. So remember, when you have, you know, x plus 5 equals 2, or x plus 6 equals, or x minus 6, or x, let's do x minus 5 equals 2, or uh, 5 times x equals 20, or x um, 20 divided by, or x divided by 5 equals 4. So you can see these are four different one-step equations. So like I said, the equation, the equal sign itself is a scale, and it must always be balanced. You can move things around in equations, but Remember, it must always be balanced. So you, you must be careful how you move things around. Pay close attention to the rules. When something is positive to move it to the other side, you subtract and vice versa. So this would get you five minus five. This cancels out over here. This, so you, whatever you do on one side of the equation, you have to do on the other. This gets you two minus five, which is negative three. Is negative three plus five two? Yes. When something is being subtracted, how do you move it to the other side? You add it because you want it to zero out over there. You're pretty much moving it to the other side of the equation. So you must all, you can do whatever you want on one side of the equation. If I wanted to multiply each side by 100, I could do that. Multiply each side by 1,000. Subtract 1,000. Subtract 100. Whatever you do on one side, you must do on the other because it will stay balanced that way. When something's being multiplied, how do you move it to the other side? You divide. So this is five times x. So when you divide both sides by five, you get the x by itself. 
You get X is four. Is five times four 20? Yes. So this is how you can do it without doing these in your head. I'm well aware you could do these in your head. These are easy one-step equations, but you want to practice doing inverse operations because they're going to get so challenging to where you can't do them in your head. We're working our way. Uh, usually seventh grade year, you see two-step. Eighth grade year, you see multi-step equations. Okay, so when something's being divided, how do you move it to the other side? You multiply, right? This gets you 5x over 5, which is just x. Multiply the other side by 5. x is 20. Is 20 divided by 5, 4? Yes. So that's how you would do inverse operations. Very simple. So you might even see some decimals, like here. You know, well, I don't know how to do this in my head. What do I do? Well, when something is being divided, to move it to the other side, you multiply. So you multiply each side by 4, and you get 12.8. Okay, so let's see. If I plugged in 11, 11 minus 9 is 2. 7 times 2 is 14. 14 plus 12 is 26. Yep, first answer. Well, this is 45 equals 3z. And so if we divide both sides by 3, we get z is 15. How do I move the 8 to the other side? I add b is equal to, well, it's going to be 9 because 3b equals 27, b is 9, 11 equals 5 plus b. Very simple. There should also be some fraction ones around here. We saw some decimals. So how do I solve for this one when something's being added? To move it to the other side, you subtract. You get R is 0 0.5. If you get something wrong, make sure you push get help. They'll show you how to do it. They'll even show you how to check your answer. Where are the fractions? Here we go. So same thing here. When something's being added, how do you move it to the other side? You subtract. So then you have four fifths minus one eighth. And that will get you 27 fortieths. You should be able to do your fractions by hand. But if you're not able to, you know, use a calculator. But, you know, being that we're in sixth grade, we should know how to do fractions by hand. So then same thing here. When something is being subtracted, how do we move it to the other side? We add, and we get 13 ninths. Oh, I typed that wrong. I typed it weird. There we go. And the same thing with multiplying and dividing with fractions and decimals. When something is being multiplied, how do you move it to the other side? You divide. So you're going to do 1 half divided by 2 thirds, which gets you 3 fourths. There you go. You can see they did the same. They divided both sides by two-thirds, but when you divide a fraction, you flip and multiply, which is why you see them doing that, and they got three-fourths. When something is being multiplied, how do you move to the other side? You divide. So five divided by two-thirds is 15 over two. Oops, typed that weird again. So make sure you know how to do fractions before doing this. I have lots of students, as soon as they see fractions, they're like, I don't know how to do it. It's like, it's not that you don't know how to do it. You just don't know how to do fractions. So make sure you know fractions. Let me know if you have any questions. Good luck.